In order to understand the tokenomics of Hedera, we have to understand the parts and pieces. First, we're going to start with the treasury, which holds non-circulated HBAR and, con and is controlled by the governing council. Next, the foundation was endowed with HBAR for the development of the Hedera Hashgraph ecosystem by supporting different projects. Then we have nodes. Nodes run the Hedera software and distributed ledger, currently limited to 29 governing council members. At open access, the network started. All 50 billion HBAR started in the treasury. But with treasury and the nodes in place, the network could start. However, they needed capital to start the network. They needed to distribute the HBAR to the community, and they needed to get applications online. Critics of HBAR say the coin suffers from inflation, and that is true. But it is also true of all proof-of-stake networks where coins are minted right away. Hedera had to inflate the network. How did they do this? First they started by giving and creating the HBAR Foundation that subsidizes applications in key areas. Second, investors that provided capital to start the networks are given HBAR distributions over time according to scheduled payouts. And third, the Treasury sells HBAR to pay expenses and taxes. When they sell HBAR to pay for expenses and taxes, it is done through a third party and is controlled over time. They do not dump HBAR onto the network. However, there is a steady stream of HBAR to buy. A community of investors who want HBAR do have a source. All of this is published in an HBAR release schedule. I've provided the links here so you can go and see them. And by Q4 of 2025, Hedera should be approximately 50% inflated. Between now and Q1, 2025 releases will be 1 50th of what they have been in the past. All of this can be seen in the schedule. This is a table that shows HBAR's planned release schedule, although these numbers are a little out of date. But what you can see is the amount of HBAR that is going to be released is declining sharply. 2024 will be a transitional time, but 2025 is when we really start a utility network type period. Other flows that occur in the network are between the application and the node when they pay for transactions, and between the node and the exchange when they sell the HBAR that they've collected for the transactions. The community, of course, has to buy and sell if they're investing, or just buy if they're wanting to use the applications, and then, of course, they transfer HBAR to the application for use. In addition, the community now has the ability to stake HBAR to a node and receive HBAR as a reward. I've taken the tokenomic model that we've just discussed and put it into this spreadsheet. In order to understand how velocity affects the price, we have to understand this equation. Price equals the network revenue, meaning the number of transactions times the transaction price, divided by the velocity times the circulating supply. A very important secondary equation tells us how many transactions we can have given a number of HBAR and the HBAR cost divided by the cost per transaction. In order to really understand these equations, I came up with the simplest set of numbers possible. Instead of having 50 billion HBAR, the Treasury only minted one. The Treasury sells that one HBAR on the open market and receives five cents. The person who bought it was from the community. They pulled five cents out of the economy and exchanged it for the one H bar. Now they have the one H bar. That community member bought the H bar because they wanted to use the H bar. So they take their one H bar and they feed it to this application. That application using that H bar can do 250 transactions. The node processes those transactions, but it doesn't need the H bar. It needs to pay for electricity, personnel, other expenses. So it takes the H bar, puts it back on the open market, in the exchange and receives five cents back. It uses that five cents to pay for electricity and other expenses. The H bar is back on the exchange and to get this five cents they had to exchange it with somebody. Somebody from the community pulled another five cents out of the economy, bought the H bar, and so the cycle continues. If we fill in the price equation with the values at the top, then you can see we have a price equal to 250 transaction times two thousandth of a cent, times a hundred percent velocity, and our circulating supply of one H bar. This gives us a price of five cents. With our equations in place, we can now begin to do some what-if scenarios. Let's do an inflationary scenario. In this 
example, the circulating supply of H bar is doubled. You can see that the equations don't lie. If there is inflation, the price is going to come under pressure. With the doubling of the circulating supply, the price is dropped in half. This is also driven because none of the other factors have changed. The community still needs 250 transactions, only 250 transactions. If for some reason the community needed 500 transactions, what you'll find is that we're back to 5 cents. So you can see that there is a seesaw effect of the number of HBAR in circulation, the velocity, and the number of transactions. Now we'll introduce the concept of storage. What storage does is it effectively lowers the velocity of the network. Less HBAR are participating in the economic cycle. Storage is also known as hodling, holding on for dear life. If we cut velocity in half, we take it to 50%, what we should see is that our H-bar price has now doubled. It was at 5 cents, now it's at 10. You can see that one H-bar is now in storage, someone's hodling it, and one H-bar is left for the remaining 500 transactions in the economic cycle. Now that we understand some of the levers in the tokenomic cycle, we can begin to look at other areas of interest. Now that we have our model, let's look at some real-world numbers. Circulating supply is approximately 22 billion H-bar. If we wanted to keep our 5 cent price level, our velocity would have to be a meager 0.011%. What this means is that most H-bar are being held by the community waiting for this large transaction cycle to begin. Only 2,420,000 H-bar are involved in the economic cycle right now to support this five cent price. Looking at this table for 2022, we're going to end with 600 million transactions. You can see that is a paltry $120,000 network revenue. In 2023, we're hoping that some meaningful transaction growth will actually start to occur. Maybe this is the Coupon Bureau or Atma.io. If the velocity were to remain this low, you could expect the HBAR price would be $29. I don't expect the velocity to stay that low. As the price climbs, I'm sure there are some folks who have had HBAR for a very long time that are going to want to take some profits. I've increased the velocity tenfold here, and you can see that has a resultant action of dropping the price by tenfold. Also note that revenue for the network is now 70 million. This means that the network is most likely going to be able to support itself. In this table, we have also filled out some other transactional volumes. This is more just a food for thought exercise. None of these numbers should be taken seriously. No one knows what's going to happen. Next, we added some node cost analysis. So nodes, have expenses, they have electricity, hardware, and personnel. Electricity is variable, hardware and personnel are overhead. The energy cost per transaction is estimated to be 0 0.00017 kilowatt hours per transaction. Energy, where I live, costs almost $13 per kilowatt hour. If we translate this into a cost per transaction, we arrive at a very small number as a cost per transaction. Once electricity has been paid for, all that remains is overhead cost. The overhead cost that I estimated for a per node basis is $120,000. What we can see in the table below is that as transaction volumes start to rise, the number of nodes supported also begins to rise. At 27 billion transactions, we actually would have enough network revenue to support our 39 governing council members. After this, it would start to make sense that permission nodes be brought online. At 305 billion transactions per year, now we start to get into anonymous node territory, bringing more and more nodes online as these transactions pop up to support them. The takeaway from all of this is the fact that the network does not even become profitable until we get to 27 billion. This really puts a point on the fact that this network was built for transaction volume and utility value.